eben noch geprobt und jetzt schon bei uns im Studio, was mich sehr freut, nämlich äh, es ist ein Mann, der ja der Musikgeschichte geschrieben hat, mehr als 100 Millionen Alben verkauft. Sein Debütalbum ist eines der erfolgreichsten aller Zeiten und jetzt ist er wieder da mit einem neuen Album, dem 12. Meet Love. Hallo. You speak German really well. Yeah, thank you. Even from Austrian. I'm wondering as well. Ja, yeah, ich als Österreicherin versuche mein Bestes. Ja. Willst du mit mir ins Kino gehen? Na jederzeit. Was gucken wir uns denn an? Uh, nein. <laughs> <laughs> A good choice. A good choice. I don't, I don't really know. I don't, what did you say back? But it's always better to say no than yes. yes. If you don't yeah. understand yeah. something, yeah. I think so. I know I asked you to go to the movies, but I don't know what your reply was. I was asking which movie we should go. Oh, I see. Okay. Do you have time to go out for movies sometimes or never? No, I haven't been out... One one afternoon I went, well, I went to a, a 11.15 in the morning movie Ugh. about um, eight months ago because people were coming to the house to do something and I didn't want to be there. Ah, oh, okay, that's the reason why. Yeah. But it was a movie for kids or what at this time? No, it was Thor. Ah, oh, okay. Got you. Um, You're here tomorrow at Wetten, that's actually the last show of Thomas Gottschalk, um, to present um, a medley because you've got a new album, the 12th, and um, it's a very special one. You said it's the personal, most personal one of yours. Is it because you sing out of your perspective, your point of view, and not out of the perspective of another character this time? I don't even have to give an answer. You just yeah. gave it for me. Ah, oh, okay. That was the perfect answer. Yeah? Yeah, it was, it's, it's, it's from my perspective. Exactly. In fact, just answer that for me, will you? Okay. Then I have to learn. That's not a good question then. But um, do you see, um, you, you're not very optimistic in our times, right? Well, now, see, that's not necessarily true because it, it for the first song really deals with me. And, and my, my faults and my, my, you know, what I have to deal with. Um, and then it, the neck, and it goes in, it, it sequences in an order, but it's all seen through my eyes. But uh, as you go through, it gets more optimistic. Mm -hmm. And it, it's a kind of, a, it's very political, but I don't hit you over the head with it. There's things about suicide. There's things about cancer victims there's thing but I, i'm not hitting you over the head um but then it, it becomes optimistic into the into the uh, when you get to a song called our love and our souls mm -hmm. where it's just two normal people mm -hmm. who have these problems that everyone has um and patty then sings the chorus and says listen none of that matters as long as we have our love with each other and our souls. Mm. And then um, then it even gets more optimistic with a song called Stand in the Storm. Mm -hmm. you, you work with Patty for so many years now. She sings with you California Dreaming on your record as well. What's so special about her? Uh, well, she's a <laughs> she's great singer. <laughs> and, uh, and she's a lot younger than me. <laughs> so when, when uh, you know, if I'm having an, a little bit of an off night, I know that that you know Patty's like a rock. She can do it. Yeah, I've I've had in the whole time that I've been working with Patty, I've 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 seen her have one off night, and that was just recently, and the poor thing was hysterical. And uh, she was cry I, we couldn't stop her from crying, and it's like I and I said now you know how I feel, and she'd never had one before. She'd never had this off night. Why did you choose California Dreaming then to sing with her on the record? Why this cover version? Um, because I think that's the way John Phillips, the writer mm -hmm. who wrote the song, intended it to be. Because it's not, it's a metaphor, really. It's not really about somebody wants to go to California. Mm -hmm. It's not the little, all the leaves are brown. And the sky is gray. Because the minute you hear the sky is gray, mm -hmm. that tells you there's, there's something wrong. Mm -hmm. And really, California Dreaming, if you ever knew, I knew John Phillips. Mm -hmm. So he was kind of a depressed human being. And it was a metaphor for somebody not being able to follow their dreams and fear holding them back. Mm -hmm. And that's what California Dreaming is. That's, it's not really about someone who's dreaming about California. It's about somebody who's dreaming 
that they want to go do something really bad. But, and I would say that's 98% of the population who want, they, they go, they're not happy with what they're doing and they have a dream to do something else, but what's holding them back is fear. Can you do always what you want to do? No one can. No one can. But I sure do damn try. <laughs> um, is it this time, because it's such a personal record, is it um, um, that you're more nervous about um, the upcoming, because it released yesterday, um, so is it more special than the other records then, or is it the same? The, um, the last two records, Hang Cool Teddy Bear mm -hmm. and Hell in a Handbasket, have been, t since Bat of Hell, um, the two most special records I've ever done. Uh, they, um, they're, they're, they're very different. And, uh, now, Hank Cool Teddy Bear is totally character driven because mm -hmm. it's really a film script. It's a, it, it, um, and Hell in a Handbasket is personal. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's emotionally driven. And, and so those two records, there's only three records that I can listen to that I've done all, that I can sit and listen to all the way through without putting, taking, stopping and going, okay. oh, why'd I do that? Okay. And, and one's Bad Out of Hell and then Hank Cool Teddy Bear and, and then I'm going to pick it up and show it just because I've got to. Uh, oh, this is not the right cover, but it's still, it's got the right name. Uh, Meatloaf, <laughs> Hell in a Handbasket, okay? It's the wrong cover. But that's beside the point. Okay. okay. There's something special on the record because you've got two great rap artists, uh, great hip hop artists on this record as well. Chuck D from Public Enemy and uh, Lil John. Uh, so how comes? Right. Well, well, one's rap, and that's Chuck D, and the other one's hip hop. Yeah. And they're very different art art forms, and 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 how they approach their poetry and how they approach their stance and their views are very different. Um, Why there? Well, one is because I met Little John. He became my friend, mm -hmm. and so I wanted to do something with Little John. So I came across this song called "Stand in the Storm," and I I thought, okay, this is an amazing song. This will be great for me to do with with Little John and with a guy named John Rich. And when we were doing "Mad Bad World." They, there was a, we were putting in another song in the middle of it. We were combining two songs. And, I, and they were working on a key for me to sing this other song. And I went, um, you know, I shouldn't sing the middle. We should, we should, um, it, it, it needs to be rap. Mm -hmm. And, and they, and Paul, the producer and, and the piano player looked at me. And I said, really? And I said, Yeah, it, it really needs this in here. I said, who can we get? I know LL, and I know Ice Cube, and I know Ice T, and I know... Um, but I said, LL's working on, the, on his TV show, and I, um, Ice T's working on his TV show, and Ice Cube, I don't know how to get in touch with him. I suppose we could, but it might take a while. And Paul looked at me, and he said, well, <clears throat> the guy you want is Chuck D. He is the rapper's rapper. I said, okay, well, how do I find him? Well, your son-in-law is his best friend. So my daughter's husband, okay. uh, Scott Ian from Anthrax, is one of Chuck D's best friends. So I picked up the phone and I said, uh, Scott, I need Chuck. And he went, okay. So it all happened in about 20 minutes. But why did you feel it has to be rap? I, it What? just... Just a it was of just, it was just, it, it total came from total feeling. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, and it just came, it, it wasn't like I sit and thought about it. It just was like this, this thing, it just hit me. And I went, the, the, the way the vocal was going, the way I'd done the vocal, and what the song was saying, I just felt it, that, that, that rap would give it a more powerful, okay, gotcha. mm -hmm. give it a, give it this impact mm -hmm. and um, and Chuck D about a week later sent us back I didn't even know what he was doing he just sent it back to me and Paul says we he, Paul waited for me to hear it 
and he plugged it in and he turned it up and we just sat there like this. Absolutely stunned. Mm -hmm. And I went, the guy was in my brain. Mm -hmm. He was, he was inside my head because he said exactly, exactly what I was <clears throat> thinking. I couldn't have done what he did, but what he, what his message was, was exactly what I was thinking the message should be. So it was, it was, it was pretty spectacular because he just came, it just came from the heart and the emotion and it came from his heart and his emotion and it, and it worked. And it's great trying something new out, right? And, and people don't expect it. So no, I like that. I, I love new. Yeah. I love new. Once you said that um, if I could play guitar, I would be incredibly good because I can think of guitar runs, right? Um, why didn't you learn it for yourself then, playing the guitar? Was there no time or? No. <laughs> I would. I, I, if, if I would have played guitar, if I would have been able to play guitar, I would be as good as Jeff Beck. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what happened? Yeah. Jeff Beck I, 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 I'm, I, I couldn't tune it very well. Huh. And so it was frustrating. Okay. I would be constantly going dong, 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 dong. Oh, man, come on. So you have to ask Paul Krug to do that for you. Well, no, now. See, yeah. this was back a long time ago. This was, this was you know, the, the guitars were made of hollow stone. <laughs> and, and, you know, the neck was stone. I mean, it was in the Stone Age when I got the first guitar. Yeah, yeah. And... Um, so if I would have, if it would have been a few years later when they had guitar tuners, yeah. I would have been fine. Because I've learned, I've learned some guitar from, from these guys. You could start now. Well, I Maybe could start now, but, I'm, but um, I went to acting instead. Yeah. And so I went to that craft. And so that's the making but that craft worked right. Does your talent, because you're speaking about acting right now, does your talent... And, and your musicality helps you while acting as well. Your rhythm, feeling for rhythm no, and tempo. I, no, I have I have no rhythm. <laughs> I'm none. I have no rhythm. Uh, the, the poor band. They they're in such trouble all the time. Um, no, I always say I'm not a musician. I'm a, I'm an actor, mm -hmm. and because that's the skill that I take to to the vocals to the stage. Um, is that's really where I started. I didn't start music. I started acting. It was musical as well, right? It's the first musical audition. Yeah, well, no, it was actually plays mm -hmm. um, early on when I was 14. Mm -hmm. And um, I, we had a, I took, a, there was an alternative in school, acting class. So at the age of 14, you actually, for, for uh, a third of our grade, we had to direct a play. And so I directed a play called The Bad Seed, mm -hmm. which is a, a famous movie. And um, I was in it, and I, I, I directed it in the round, which I got an A for because the teacher had n no conception that anybody would ever direct anything in the round at the age of 14. And she wanted to know how I even knew about it. I said, I don't know. I just did. And so the audience sat in a circle, and... Mm -hmm. And all the characters were on stage all the time. And when they weren't speaking, they were standing in corners with their, with facing the audience without moving. So would you say if we see you on stage, it's a character as well? It has nothing to do with you as a person or what? Do no, I, no, no. Listen, n nobody that you ever see on stage in a rock concert, you're never seeing them. I don't care what they tell you. <laughs> you're seeing your persona. You're not ever seeing them. I don't care what they tell you. They're, they're not telling you the truth. Oh, whenever, they go, whenever they go, oh, I'm just myself up there. It, oh, what a load of horse manure. <laughs> uh, it's just, that, it is so phony. Okay. Because, because, peop, I, I, because people are completely different mm. in the dressing room than they are when they walk on stage. I don't care if they're a jazz band. I don't care what they do. The minute they walk on stage, there's a whole other thing that takes control of you. Mm -hmm. There's a whole different persona, a whole different energy field mm -hmm. that comes into play. Funny, because until now it's just you and Beyonce. She told the same thing, that, that she's playing a character, but all the others always say, no, it's just natural. I'm myself oh, yeah, on stage. Yeah, oh, Liars. Yeah. Beyonce is right. <laughs> and, 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 and it's like, 
No, there's a persona. There's a, there's a, it, it, maybe it's not a direct character because when Bad Out of Hell came out, I pulled out a character and I played him to the death. I mean, I, that was a character, all that. I mean, I played this, I got this character. It, you know where it came from? Raging Bull from De Niro, from Raging Bull. Mm -hmm. And so um, I just watched Raging Bull a lot. And, and uh, but uh, believe me, I know people on stage, I know people off stage, and they're not the same. Good to know from now on. <laughs> and don't let them tell you that. Don't, no. don't. They, they never just, again, never you, again. You argue. I just sitting here and say, you're a liar, you're a bastard, right. something like that. You just tell them Meatloaf said it's not true. Yeah. <laughs> We do so. Um, I just talked about um, Paul Krug, um, your guitarist on tour as well, and the producer of the album. What did he bring to the album? Everything. Everything. I mean, he... Um, everything. I mean, it was... Um, uh, I, I, I've never seen anybody work so hard. I've never seen a producer work that hard, ever. Um, He was like a dog with a bone. It, he, he, I don't think he slept during the whole time. But this was a this record we were doing. Um, we were doing this when we were on the road. So they were doing background vocals in hotel rooms, and backstage and bass parts backstage. The drummer, when we had days off, would go home and cut track drum tracks, and then they would play guitar to it backstage. They play guitar in the hotels. And when we finally um, got to start doing vocals, I did, a, I did one vocal in a closet in my house. Um, and then we had this little guest house. And um, I, did 10 voc I did 10 vocals on that record in 11 days. And I have no idea how. I, because I, I really don't get it. I don't know how it's even feasible or possible for me to do that. Because I've never even come close. The one reason I can tell you is because they're not Jim Steinman songs. Because I can do one Jim Steinman song in about 10 days. Um, uh, so they're, 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 they're easier. So that, that kinda, that's my explanation for being able to do 10 and 11 mm. days. Because they're not Jim Steinman songs. But maybe it's then the right thing. If it feels like, um, like you and know. It, and, it, and, and we made it, we made them, they're, 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 Almost live vocals. I mean, in the sense of how it comes across. Mm -hmm. We did all of me. Once I got locked into it on the day we were doing that, um, I sing it for about two hours. And all of a sudden, there was this, I just kind of left. And, and, and I walked back in the room. Paul goes, that's unbelievable. I mean, I had done the whole vocal. I mean, we fixed a word or two, but it's pretty much one, one take. So um, people can hear that on the record as well. But, but when oh, will you go? Be chewing gum on the record. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. I couldn't take it out. But once we started, there was nowhere to go but the feathers. Give it to me. Oh no. Give it to me. Oh, no. No, no. <laughs> Give me the I chewing gum. <laughs> so tell me, you've been on tour in New Zealand and in Australia. When are you going back to be in uh, Germany then? Um, I don't know. They're talking about May. 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 Okay. Looking we'll see. Then. We'll see, yeah. So, um, after f 40 years doing all the crazy stuff you did, is there anything else you want to achieve? Everything. Mm -hmm. There's nothing, there's so much to achieve, it's unbelievable. I mean, I, I, want, I want the shows to be better, I want better records, I want to be a better actor, I want to be a better person. Um, I, I want to be a kinder person, I want to... I, I want to help more charities. It's anytime that anybody says to you, well, you know, I've done a lot, there's not that much, then again, you're, mm. you just leave mm. because they're not worth talking to. It's always good to be hungry, actually. Yeah, yeah I mean, I'm, I'm always, I'm, I, I always, always want to be better than I am in every respect. Um. Thomas Gottschalk yesterday said um, that this time you have to go a step further because the last time it was a kiss, now he's expecting tongue. <laughs> so what do you see? Well, I guess that I'm a bad kisser because I thought we had tongue on the first one. 
<laughs> okay, let's see. I'm surprised about tomorrow. Thank you very much for tomorrow. being here. See ya. Okay.